All right, on today's video, we're just going to string a racket. I'm going to try to talk you through things that I do, some things that other people do different. I'm not going to say mine's right or theirs right. There's just different ways of stringing rackets. Uh, I'll try to kind of go slow, try to explain everything. Uh, mains obviously aren't very hard to do. You just got to figure out where to start them at. You either start them in the foot or you start them in the head. Uh, the way you can tell is your grommets down here, the number of grommets that you have, like this racket has eight grommets in the throat, so you're gonna start at the head. If you had six grommets in the throat, you'd start at the throat. Uh, always, I've mentioned this in several of my videos, when I mount my rackets, I always mount them with the butt cap up, that means the logo is up, uh, where you can read the logo. That way all my rackets are always mounted exactly the same way. If you have rackets that are, uh, designed where you have to string them starting on one side uh, some of the bablot rackets like that the pure arrow comes to mind uh, where you have to string it you have to start in a certain spot typically all rackets will start in the same spot if you do it that way i'm not going to say that's a hundred percent guarantee but typically so anyway we'll get started and again mains are really pretty simple you just pull them straight Pretty much anybody can do mains. I like to run mine together, keep them even. That way when you pull them, they stay even. And the whole clamp, it's kind of a feel thing. You kind of got to get used to your machine to know how tight to clamp them without damaging the strings, but without slipping also. And always kind of pay attention to your string after you clamp it. It doesn't take any time. Make sure your string's not slipping in the clamp. Make sure your bases aren't slipping. Or most people save, you see these guys that string real fast. Weaving, obviously, the strings and the crosses. You can get a little quicker. And a lot of it's just pulling the string. I've had the discussion numerous, 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 numerous times about uh, releasing the clamp first or the base first. Some people release the base first, but they say that it keeps the clamp from shifting and causing little micro scratches on your string. If that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. I release the clamp on mine first instead of the base. I'll see if I can demonstrate a little bit here. So, in the first one, it usually puts a little bit of pressure on there. If you lease the base first, it moved maybe a little bit. I think that's just more stock in the clamp than anything. But you'll notice once you pull and you put your clamp on there, once you release the tension head, you always have a little bit of drawback. And when you pull the next one, you're going to recover that drawback. So me, I do the clamp first. And it'll just drop. If you have your clamps too tight, when you release it, it won't drop. Again, if I release the base first, let's see if we see anything. I mean, it kind of wobbled, but I didn't notice anything. I didn't notice it pulling back, anything like that. So I really don't think it really matters. I know if you do the clamp first and you have a dual action clamp, it uh, does save you a little bit of time. But again, like I said, I'm going to try to go a little slow. said before I do everything in the three or threes 
So like when I started, I did three strings. Next side, I did multiple of three, which is six. This side, I'll do another multiple of three, which would be nine, but obviously there's not nine strings over there. And all I'm doing here, I'm just running that string, just kind of get it out of the way so it's not too long. You run your hand here, I mean, you can tell it's a little bit rougher where the clamp was at. Was that because I released the clamp first or the base first? We'll find out. Hang on. I released the base first. And it feels exactly like it did down here. So, again, I'm just going to say that's personal preference. Do it how you want to do it. Always add a little bit of tension to my knots. And my knots, I always do a Parnell knot. And here, I'm not really pulling real hard on the string to tighten that knot. I usually don't cut that. And you're not trying to break it. You're not trying to twist it. I mean, you're just snugging the knot up. Once you release tension, that's going to finish tightening up your knot. Something to always pay attention to too when you cut your string. I don't need to do this, but I'm going to do it. Cut at an angle. Don't cut straight across. Cut at an angle. You're trying to put a little tip. I don't know if you can see that. But you're trying to put a little tip on the strings. So it'll be nice and sharp and clean and go through the hole better. And if you get up here and try to push it in and it's kind of tight or you can't get it in, if you just change the angle like if it's over there if you rotate a little bit that tip sometimes it'll ride over the string and go in a little easier you can also take an awl and run an awl in there make like a little channel for that string to go into but again i'm not like pulling hard on this string I'm just a little bit maybe oh man i'm gonna say 10 pounds of pressure maybe in this part not even that probably just the main mains always go pretty quick because I mean you're really not doing anything you're just pulling straight anybody can pull your mains now when you start rackets the way I always start them I start over here on this side and again, I've mentioned this before, if you skip one grommet, I start under. If I skip two grommets, I'll start over. So this one I skipped one, I'm going to start under. So you can start them this way, where you start that first string, like that. Or, some people like to come over here and start the second string. And i got to remember, if you do the second string, I think it's just the opposite. You'd start under this string typically, I'd start over it. And what they'll do, they'll weave it all the way through. They'll do this second one. And then they'll go through the first one. Yeah, see, so that's just going to come out opposite. Pull that one down, then you can weave this one across. Well, you could do it that way, which I obviously I have a misweave there. Those are both over. But you can do it that way also. Uh, that's what a lot of people like to do. They say that way they don't have to mess with it. But to me, it's just a 
about the same or you can come over here you can start over here and then start this one measure out how much you need to get to your tension head put my starting clamp on so now you can either pull tension on this string which is what I've done in a lot of my past videos. I'm trying to get out of that habit because you really just don't need to. Or you can go ahead and run your second string. And actually, if you run the second one, all you're doing, you're keeping from putting direct tension on, you're not pulling tension on the top string twice. Well, like this one, you can go ahead and pull your string all the way through. And make sure you always fan your string. But you'll go ahead and run your third one before you pull any tension. Now me, when I run it out, I just leave a little bit out. Uh, some other people, they like to pull it almost all the way through. I don't do that. So again, you could have pulled tension here. I mean, you're not going to hurt anything. You could have gone ahead and just pulled tension on this first string like I've always done in my other videos. Or you can go ahead and pull tension on the second string. If you do that, make sure you kind of move them a little bit. Get a little slack out. And, and judge your clamps. What that's doing is just keeping me from pulling tension twice on this top string because before what I was doing, I was pulling tension on this string directly. And then I was going back tying the knot and pulling tension again on the knot string. So I just kind of eliminated that. And again, as you get more experience bringing rackets, you'll get faster. And the only two things really gonna get you faster is you'll learn how to weave a little faster and pull the string a little bit faster. I'm gonna say more confidently. And when you tie the knot, try to be opposite. And this obviously this is all a two piece you can also do a one piece i don't like doing one piece and now i'm going to tie the knot add tension to it and when you tie your knot make sure your clamps are opposite so your bottom clamp needs to be opposite of your starting clamp if you're using a starting clamp if you're using a starting knot you don't have to worry about it also if you're going to use a starting knot you don't want to pull tension on that top string directly anyway because they can pull that knot through that grommet damage your grommet so you always want to pull tension on the second string. With the tire knot. And if you use a starting clamp, I've got some videos out there where I kind of caught myself talking and wasn't really paying attention. You don't want to get all the way to the bottom. You really want to tie your knot as quick as possible because that starting clamp just sit, continuing continuously pressing or clamping that string will start to damage your string. It'll make it flat and create a weak spot. You also notice that there are times I do release the base first, not the clamp. And that's just, you know, through years of experience, thousands of rackets, knowing which strings I really need to release this first. Cause like on that string, if I'd released the clamp first, it wasn't gonna drop off. It was gonna just hang there. So by releasing the, plant, the base first, the clamp go ahead and drop. And a lot of people tell you, get that clamp just as close to that grommet as you can. So I'm gonna touch it. Kind of a little example here. You're gonna lose a little bit, it's gonna draw back a little.
And I'll show you why I don't like to get it as close as possible. I like to keep it, you know, eighth of an inch away from the side if I can. You also know I pull up on the string. That kind of helps keep it straight. Okay. Hang on here. Now that should have recovered whatever tension it lost here, plus some. And something is you keep going if you decide you're gonna do this little push weave. Learn how to use multiple fingers. Okay, now I'm gonna leave, release this. It probably won't drop, it might, but it won't because it pulled it. Now the string is putting pressure on the inside of the jaw because it has pulled it up against that grommet. So you don't want that. I didn't even pull tension yet. So I like to keep a little bit of a gap in there. That way it doesn't pull that clamp up against the grommet. Tell you something else I do when I string, especially when I get a lot of rackets. Now you notice I pull the string up, you don't want to hold it up. Let's just keep it, when it pulls, that way it'll kind of keep it straight. If you leave the string down here and you pull it, notice it kept that big arch in it. You don't want to do that. I pull it up and just kind of hold it, but you don't want to put pressure on it. You just want to let it walk its way down. But something else I do when I have a bunch of rackets is uh, if they all have a relatively the same string, I'll line them up by what tension, start with the lowest tension and go up. Uh, if they have all have different strings, these textured, like this is a shape string. Hang on. Okay, so now I left that little gap, it recovered. And it still didn't drop, but it didn't have a lot of pressure on it. But I'll do all the textured strings first before I get to the round strings. Uh, and if I have a multi-filament or a natural gut or something, I'll save those till the end. That way, I'm not trying to do these rough shape strings at the end of 10 or 15 or 20 rackets where your fingers are sore and it's getting hard. Basically what I'm doing is get the hardest rackets out first and move into the easier rackets to string. That way it's a little bit easier on the fingers. Also, if I have them go from uh, pounds to kilograms, I'll do all the kilograms last or first, whichever way. That way I don't have to go through my settings and continuously change the settings on the machine. Well, this is all pretty much just doing the same thing, just leaving the, leaving the strings. Obviously, as you start going down, it gets harder. The easiest ones to weave are from about here to here. They start getting a little harder here, but these are the easiest ones once you get to the bottom ones. I have to change up the way I weave. And always fan your strings. When you rotate your clamps, I've mentioned this before, when you release your clamps, don't rotate them out because you can always hit this racket, you can damage the paint or something. Always rotate your clamps in. I think I'm probably on about the last one that I can actually weave across like this maybe maybe I can get one more I don't know 
It all depends on um, same thing when I was talking about lining rackets up. If I have them that are 1820s string pattern, I'll typically do those first if so they're a little harder to weave because it's such a tight string bed, tight pattern. Again, when it comes to releasing your plants, I'm not saying one way better, better or worse. There's, it's all, to me, it's just all personal preference. However you want to do it, it's fine. You'll develop your own habits on how you string, and that's how you'll do it. If you have sometimes these shape strings, you gotta watch them because when they come through the grommet, they'll twist real tight. I don't know if you ever notice that. They'll typically only do it near the bottom. Sometimes you'll catch them in the middle, but usually only do it in the bottom when you have like a another string or a string block in the hole or something that it'll twist across that string. If it does that. Like it could possibly do it here. It's not going to, but it could. You could go ahead and pull it all the way through. That way it doesn't twist real bad. Because if it does twist, obviously you can let it go. These last two I have to kind of do like this. My fingers aren't strong enough anymore to keep pushing. Not so like this one there's a string you can't see it but there's a string blocking the hole so there's always a chance that if i have to pull it real fast it'll hit that string and the shape on this will start to make it twist so kind of watch out for that natural gut will do that too you gotta really watch your natural gut especially down here at the bottom couple of crosses Never want this is the tile grommet. You don't want your clamp to block that off. Um, I've taught people and seen people, you know, they get up here and obviously you can't do it on this racket. There's a little gap here, but sometimes that tile will be right here. You know, they'll stick the clamp right there, and you can't get to the grommet to tie your knot. So just make sure you pay attention where your tile off is and don't block it with your clamp. Anyway, that's different ways you can start your crosses. All of them work. It's all just kind of personal preference. You can do it however you want to. Went fairly slow there to start to talk and not get too confused. And when you do this, you don't have to hit every hole. Get like one to the bottom, one to the middle, one to the top. And just kind of pay attention. You can kind of tell if uh, you got them too far over, not enough. These aren't quite enough. Yes, yes, pretty decent. Crosses, all of them look really good. But, so all the crosses stayed fairly straight. And again, that's all because I pull them up and I'll walk them away their self down instead of just leaving them and pulling them, making little smiley faces. Uh, that's it. Have any questions, let me know. And again, when you string rackets, just try to be consistent. Do everything the same way every time. Uh, 
if you find you don't have to follow my technique, find somebody else, follow their technique. Uh, just learn your own technique. But I mean, it's all kind of personal taste and habit. No, I streamline the way I streamline, all out of habit. But hope you enjoyed the video.